Massey, thank you again for joining us. Um, so we're just going to start out just by having you tell us um, just a little bit about yourself, your background, and uh, why you have decided to run for this position. Uh, my name is Michael Massey. I've been in New Haven, Connecticut my whole entire life. I'm very urban. I'm in the urban community trying to fix the education system and the, the crime in these urban cities. I've actually been to jail, so I'm, uh, I got a, a different level of experience that I'm trying to bring to the table. Uh, I feel like the Democrats that run every urban city is, have been negligent, allowing these cities culture to, I mean, fall by the wayside. So uh, I, I think we need some uh, more normal people running for Congress. I mean, we have a, a bunch of people run these, these, these towns that have been in office 30, 40 years, and they're, they're out of touch of what we need in these, in these areas. Once you've been in Congress 30, 40 years, you're from Washington. You're, you're no longer from Connecticut. Yeah, well, um, your little spiel is a perfect segue into my first question, which is uh, about your district and about the incumbent, uh, who is a Democrat, Rosa DeLauro, and uh, she has held the office yeah. for 33 years now, I'm sure you know. Um, so can you just tell us what yeah. specific qualities um, and perspectives uh, are you bringing that is going to resonate with the constituents in your district um, and, you know, who are seeking the change that you're seeking um, after three decades of the Democratic leadership? Well, my platform is financial incentives, change the culture. We've tried everything else. I have a, on my platform that's called student investments, whereas we advocate the money from the Department of Education, give it out to bonuses for American families, for your children to do better in school, honors in particular. I need these kids to be tested. I just had a corner store. These, these, these children, they're, they're not doing good. I mean, a lot of these kids, they can't even count change. I mean, it's, it's so embarrassing. And you can't expect these kids to, to, to grow up and have great futures if they, like 30% of our kids are reading on, on grade level. Yeah, and um, so as a member of the Black community, as you mentioned, how do you plan to address um, these concerns among 90% of Black voters in your district who traditionally vote Democrat? Um, what strategies will you implement to show that Republican policies better align uh, with their priorities and can effectively address the issues they care about? First of all, we have to stop sending so much of our money to, to Washington to, to, to these departments that are failing our children. Everybody, everybody see that the Democrat policies aren't working for us. To address your question, we just got to educate people. Like my policies are very popular when people get to read them. In this city, in this state, in, in general, the media don't give you too much, uh, too much airplay when you're a Republican. That's why I'm, uh, I'm glad that I, I also was endorsed by the Independent Party because it's hard to get people that been voting Democrat their whole life to move all the way to the Republican Party. So now I'm on the Independent line as well. Everyone knows that something has to change. It's, it's, it's too much crime out here. People are getting killed, and Democrats they, uh, they act like it's not happening. Yeah, and so uh, what is your stance on the Affordable Care Act, uh, considering Rosa DeLauro's emphasis on its importance uh, when it comes to providing access to quality and affordable health care for everyone? How do you plan to improve health care access and affordability um, for the residents in your district? I would say I'm, I'm, uh, I'm not against the Affordable Care Act. Like, I'm, I'm not against Democrats in general. I, just, I really believe we need to diversify our vote. Like this, this, this country has gotten too divided. Like if you say yes on this side, the other side gotta say no. I'm not against the Affordable Care Act. Could it be an improvement in certain ways? Like we bring down. I think the hospitals got too much power. Uh, I think we should go back to uh, investing in doctors' offices so, so they can start putting in their own prices in. I mean, you sprain your ankle out here. You go to go to the hospital. You, you, you leave out there with a fifteen hundred dollar bill. It's, it's ridiculous. And it's not the doctors that's doing it. It's these hospitals that that run everything. I think we have to uh, put the power back into the hands of the people, back into the hands of the, these doctors. And that's a whole other matter. Well, related to um, you know a healthcare issue, um, I would say abortion has become kind of a hot ticket item, especially after Roe v. Wade was overturned and, you know, this year is a presidential election cycle. Um, so what is your stance on the balance between the federal and state control of abortion that we have now um, 
you know, especially when it comes to a potential national ban on abortion that is being discussed in some more conservative Republican circles. Me personally, I, I don't believe in a federal ban. I like that it went back to the states, let the people vote on it. I think that's a, the best way to go. Me personally, I'm, I'm, I'm pro-life, but I'm not running for the king. And the, the people in my district, they make their decision on the, the parameters that they're going to put on uh, abortion. I think we got things one step at a time. I think getting rid of Roe v. Wade was perfect. People that live in Alabama don't think like people that live in Connecticut. Like, we don't have a, a royal family in this country. The people should have a voice. Yeah, <clears throat> and um, just moving on to another voter issue. So uh, I believe you've maybe mentioned that criminals will always find a way to obtain firearms. So maybe you might have a little more of an insight on this. Um, what policies maybe would you propose to prevent um, guns from falling into the hands of those involved in gang violence and criminal activities? There's no policy that you could uh, write up. We just have to get in these cities, these towns, and change the culture. Like we have to emphasize education. Like when kids are getting honors in my uh, student investment program, when kids are kids that are getting honors ain't carjacking you. These aren't the kids that's uh, out selling drugs. We we have to let these kids know that they can have a bright future if they're doing the right thing. But when you you grow up so poor, a lot of your role models are drug dealers and, and that sort. Your parents aren't really caring as much. If we uh, give uh, student investments to these parents to make sure that their kids are doing better, I'll say within the first two years, our test score is going to go up at least 20-25%. We start getting these children ready to go to college. We start making more uh, role models in these schools. The cool kids become doing better in school, in these study halls. They'll start forming their own study groups. We have to change the culture. When I was growing up as a kid, all the way to my early 20s, I've always had a gun. You, you can't stop people from having a gun. I had duffel bags full of guns. This is something I could, I could bring to con Congress because our leaders, they haven't lived the life that they're trying to change. They're in these, these seats guessing how to change things, how to fix things. They've never seen anything, uh, especially from uh, the people that they are trying to change. They're, they're trying to fix us from the outside looking in, and it's not going to work. It's never going to work no matter what type of law you pass. Guns are easily found. There's more guns by far times 10 than there are American citizens, and it's never going to change. We just got to make sure we teach these kids that there's a better way than the, the, the criminal element that, that got their minds. And the final point that I want to touch on here is, so obviously we are a Muslim platform um, and we are committed to addressing the concerns of the Muslim community. And one of those, especially since last year, um, the end of last year has been the violence that is going on in Gaza. Um, much of which is being supported by the Biden administration by supplying the Prime Minister Benjamin, Benjamin Netanyahu with <clears throat> military aid, weapons. Um, however, former President Donald Trump has also had a relatively soft stance on Israel, um, kind of more siding with Netanyahu. Um, how do you think this affects um, you know, Republican support um, across the board and maybe even from Muslim Republican voters. This is the issue is, is, is extremely complex. I have uh, ideas. I, I don't know if you want to hear them right now, but... Uh, I mean, that's why we're here. <laughs> Donald Trump and uh, Kamala Harris, they're on the same team when it comes to this, for, for, for the most part. I'm never voting to, to send them a dollar. Not uh, Ukraine, not Israel, to kill these children. From what I'm reading in these reports, over a thousand kids have lost a leg, if not two legs, to bomb a whole building. If Netanyahu insists on doing things his way without our input, I can't I, I can't vote to send you money for these bombs that are killing children, women, and innocent people. But at the same time, we have to have an end game. We have to find out a, a, a way to fix it. Like I said, I, I have ideas. They're, they're not popular as of yet, but I believe it's, it's the only way. Well, that's all I have for you today, Mr. Massey. Thank you again so much for joining us.